In this video, we will look at the template Django View project, which shows how you can integrate Vue.js with Django REST framework. Uh, we, uh, in the previous courses, looked at Vue.js and how it can connect to an API through Axios, and also we did the Django REST exercises, how you can build an API, but now we have to connect the two projects together. And, uh, the Django view template we provide you uh, shows you how you can do that. There are different ways. This is one way uh, and also add some additional um, configuration to be able to, to have both projects running in development mode uh, and update uh, and connect together. Um, additionally, uh, it also integrates what we have provided in the advanced topic. It handles course. So you can connect um, the Vue.js application to the backend without being uh, on the same domain name or the same port. And also uh, we show how you can handle authentication through a modern way like with uh, JSON web tokens. This allows the client application to connect to an authentication server to get a token which uh, can then be reused in different API servers. Uh, that's also useful if we plan to do a micro service ar architecture that's something outside of the scope of this course but it's a good practice to, to connect uh, front-end application like Vue.js with uh, uh, web tokens. Um, so, so the template project also handles this part and shows you how you can use the uh, endpoint APIs from Django REST to, to get these tokens and authenticate with your, uh, your backend. And so it includes uh, some additional plugins for Vue and for Django uh, to make uh, this work together. Uh, we have the, the structure of the folders. All the Django code is in the backend folder. Uh, the Vue uh, code is in the source folder. And then uh, if you build the view application, it ends in a dist folder, which can be used also uh, in production mode uh, for the backend. But that uh, is a topic for a later date. We uh, start with the prerequisite that you already have Node.js installed, that you know about Vue and Python, that you have Python installed on Git on the uh, VS Code and other, uh, all the tools we used in the preceding exercises uh, and so you, you can get started. So I will just go to the setup uh, as it's shown in the project readme and show you that uh, out of the box we can have a, a great experience with everything uh, working. So I will switch to uh, Visual Studio Code. and get started by uh, copying the project so we can use git to clone it or if you already have a, a git maybe it's better to download the, the, the zip file or add these files to your existing git uh, repository you can also have this in a separate uh, folder and just then use the, the files uh, and copy one after another the files you are uh, you want to add to your own project if you already uh, did some setups. But here, if you you start with this project, you already have everything you need uh, from Vue and Django to 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 get started. So we switch to the downloaded folder, uh, and then you can open it uh, in the IDE. And look at the files. So, so we have the backend with uh, the Django code, and we have the the source folder with the uh, Vue.js code. If you use VS Code, uh, it proposes to to install some extensions um, for Vue and for for Python. So let's install the the extensions. Uh, and while it's installing the extensions, we can do the further setup. Um, so. For a Vue.js project, we know that uh, the first things we have to do is to 
do an npm install to get uh, our dependencies installed. Um, so a quick npm install will read the package JSON file and install uh, all the dependencies. And then I'm ready to run my Vue server with npm run dev, um, which will start on localhost. We can open this port and already we see that we have a running web application front end uh, with the home page and a second page with Django REST. And here, uh, well, if I try to connect, it won't work because the, the backend server is not yet running. Um, but let's go back to uh, yes code and try to set up the, um, the backend. So I open a second terminal, I can split here. So I have the terminal for the front end and the terminal for the back end. Um, for the back end, it's a Django application. So if we go back to the readme, I have to do a, a virtual environment and install uh, the dependencies in it, as you have seen in the Django exercises. So let's create the virtual environment. VS Code detects that uh, we have a, a virtual environment and proposes um, to switch to it. It's a good idea if, if later we want to debug with uh, VS Code. Um, we have to activate it. So if we are on PowerShell, it's the location of the virtual environment a script folder and activate. Now we know that uh, we are in the VM and can install our Python dependencies with pip install dash r requirements. And it will read the requirements and then install all the Python dependencies to have Django, Django REST and additional uh, required files. Once this is done, uh, what we have to do is, is the Django part. So in this Django project, we already have uh, some, uh, some uh, model. We have a basic model with just one uh, class, which has uh, two attributes, subject and body, and naturally a migration for this model. So we'll apply the migration in order that uh, the table gets created inside the database. So now we have uh, done the, the migration. And last thing we have to do the first time is to create a super user account so we can log in to the Django admin backend. So let's create this one. Admin, password admin. Yes, I agree, it's a weak password, but it's just a development environment. And now we are ready to start our Django server. And we have our Django server running on port 8000. We can connect to it. So on, on slash, nothing is yet available, but that's normal. But if I go on slash API, we have the Django REST API part. And on the slash API slash admin, we have the Django admin console and we can see that we already, through the plugins we installed, already have some different uh, um, data models. We have things for social login, we have tokens, and also we have our API, our first API um, class. We have created the message one. Uh, and if I add a message from here, hello from And if I go to the front end part and reload my page, message page, we see that the message has been successfully retrieved here without authentication because the messages are public. But I cannot yet add a message. Uh, I have to, to first log in to get a message. So I can do admin, admin, and login, and it 
works I am connected and I can add a new message hello on view add it and it gets added and we test reload yes it reloads I'm still connected logged in uh, and uh, we have the bolt messages so only authentication is handled permission level on object level base is not handled in this demo uh, that's well, something you can add if you feel that it's required um, and we can see in the Django admin, yeah, the message has been available. I can also test the API. If I go to the API messages, I can see, yes, uh, it works. We see the JSON messages as it was, it's able to be retrieved by uh, Vue.js and we are connected. Uh, so we have a project uh, which connects front end with the back end and everything works, including authentication and uh, also registering a new account and so on. Um, if we go take a look at the files, we have the backend, uh, which has uh, so the model on the migrations, the model also be already so. For the model, we need a serializer. So there's a serializer for the message and also for the user account. Uh, then we have the, um, the views which are the, um, the view sets for, for the Django REST part, which here are, are, are basic. You can add additional permission class and, and do more advanced uh, permissions than just checking if it's an admin user or, or, or something else. Uh, and here, yeah, you can read the doc of Django REST and add, add the additional permission if you need to. For the Vue.js part, you can look at the source and here you see on the view, the message view. The message view has um, basic functions. So we have the end of line, which are not nice. So let's just open a new terminal, and do a quick npm run loom get all the formatting corrected and um, we can see classical messages uh, and in, instead of doing the API calls directly from the view which is not a good practice we have implemented the service and the service will do the, the calls so if we go look at the service we have a, an API service which says where is the API located and we have an authentication service um, which handles the, the login, logout, registration, and the message service which uh, fetches, posts, and deletes messages. So you already have a, an idea how you can structure your project and connect to the API and how to use uh, the authentication part um, which is handled for you. So this should get you started uh, for, for uh, more in deep details, look at the documentation of the different plugins. Uh, but uh, starting with this project, you can directly implement additional models, additional uh, API calls uh, and, and uh, handle the user stories of your project.